If the righteous are scarcely saved, that is what the Apostle Peter said in his first letter, 1 Peter chapter 4. If the righteous are scarcely saved, here in this chapter, he explains that a little bit more. Verse 4, for if God didn't spare the angels when they sinned, think about that for a minute. If God didn't spare the angels, we're talking about angels, but cast them down to Tartarus, that is another word for hell, and committed them to pits of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Now that entire topic right there about the angels being reserved in darkness and hell is what we're going to talk about in the next video. It's just, it's a topic all by itself. But let's continue reading here. Verse 5, And didn't spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah with seven others, a preacher of righteousness. Here's another thing. Noah being a preacher of righteousness. That entire concept actually comes from the Apocrypha. Because we don't read that in the five books of Moses. We read about that in the extra biblical books, which proves that Peter not only read and knew what those books said, but also believed them. Verse 5 again, God did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah with seven others, a preacher of righteousness, when he brought a flood on the world of the ungodly. Do you see the picture that the Apostle Peter is painting here? Number one, he made a point of saying that God didn't spare the angels. Angels are considered to be perfect beings. He didn't spare them. And number two, those that he did spare in the days of Noah were very few. Following with that theme in verse 6, it says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, having made them an example to those who would live in an ungodly way. Powerful, powerful statement. Learn from history or you will repeat it. As they say, if you don't learn from history, you are doomed to repeat it. History tells us with Sodom and Gomorrah, with Pompeii, as both Sodom and Gomorrah and Pompeii engaged in the same kind of lifestyle. Sodom and Gomorrah and Pompeii were destroyed in like manner by fire and brimstone. Brimstone, by the way, is the old way of saying sulfur. And you know, volcanoes are known for a sulfury smell. And so Sodom and Gomorrah is just an example. It's just a sample. You go to the grocery store, you see a little sample on a little toothpick. That's the sample of the meal. Sodom and Gomorrah is just a sample of what's going to happen globally. As Peter also said, the elements will melt with fervent heat. It says that God placed the rainbow in the clouds as a sign of his covenant that he won't destroy the earth again with water. But following that, God promised that he will destroy the earth with fire. When you see the rainbow, think about the fire that is to come. Verse 7, delivered righteous Lot, who was very distressed by the lustful life of the wicked. Once again, following the theme that very few are saved. If the righteous are scarcely saved. Verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them was tormented in his righteous soul from day to day with seeing and hearing lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment, but chiefly those who walk after the flesh in the lust of defilement and despise authority. What does it mean by lust of the flesh? Read Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 10. Think about how people today, those who walk after the lust of the flesh, despise authority.